Hello and welcome to the fifth part of our video tutorial series. This is Mark Labar at BlenderPassion.com and in this video we're going to be just setting up the scene for rendering. So I did change it back to Beckman Glossy BSDF roughness of 0.05 and the mix shader at a fact value of 0.05 so just bear that in mind for all of the Lego materials that's what I went with. And this is actually a mirror ball projection I believe probably <laughs> strength at 0.6 and settings I think we'll just change this a bit give it some multiple importance and what that'll do is it'll just at the cost of extra memory and so on it might quicken up the render times we'll find out I suppose and we'll go ahead and hit tab to go into edit mode on our plane we'll go to wireframe mode just make sure we are selecting these two vertices here and see they're both selected and I'll just move this back to our character so it's a little closer to him. And we'll go ahead and press E, extrude it out, and left click. And we'll go ahead and do that for a bit. And this is just like some sort of backdrop. And if we hit Control 2, we'll subdivide it and make it a whole lot smoother. We'll just bring that over a bit, bring that back, and hit a loop cut loop cut with control R sorry and we'll shade it smooth this tutorial does assume that you have the basics of blender down and down pat so we'll just go ahead and keep on going with our tutorial here add in a camera move it back something decent up a bit and we'll just go ahead and position our camera move that down give us more room and looking pretty decent now we'll just pose our little character here. Not exactly sure what to pose him into, so I'll just I'll just show off some of our armature bones. Something like that, I suppose. And make him bend forward a bit. Turn his head around, and Lego heads don't really move like that, I suppose. So, on the local Y axis. And there we have it. And I don't think I'll get over that that face anytime soon. I drew it up real quick. You'll have to give me, just cut me some slack there, I guess. And so for the backdrop, let's see how this looks. Bit of a darker, deeper blue. That actually looks pretty nice. Maybe I should have had that in the final render, but something like that. But I did want a nice bluish sort of sky-like feel, but that that is really nice for posing a character, I suppose. Whatever your preferences are. Just move that in a bit. Get some good angles down. And after we do all that comes the interesting part. The finagling and fiddling, as I call it. Not a final render, so I'll leave it at 50%. And now we can just play around with the samples. And quite honestly, I haven't done this part beforehand, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here. Well... I do know what I'm doing, I'm just not sure what the optimal values are. I am thinking that it is good to have some of these parts in the tutorials now, since it actually shows that, while I'm not perfect, I do make mistakes, and sometimes I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm just putting in random values when I'm saying, oh yeah, I know exactly what I'm doing, as I put in 33 <coughs> as some random value, excuse me. So we will need quite a few more samples here, and we're going to try to reduce the noise through various methods. Cycles is a photorealistic, very physically accurate render engine, so you gotta turn things off if you want a quick render. So yeah, there is quite a bit of noise there. You can see all those fireflies and all that noise. It just doesn't look too good. And most of that's just because of the glossy shader. If it was just diffuse shaders, you could probably do this real easy on a couple hundred samples. So, I'll leave that strength maybe about there. Maybe mess around with the lamp here. Does need to be a bit brighter. That will help with the samples and noise, but not much. I'm just saying it just needs to be a bit brighter. Not sample-wise or noise-wise. So, we can mess around with clamp indirect here. Lots of materials and resources on what clamp 
does. And what Clamp does, it takes these really bright parts, generally the firefly areas, and it just brings them down to a darker color. Something like that. And we'll leave those refractive caustics off and reflective caustics. Give it a bit of filter glossy and keep messing around with some of these values. And we'll see how that looks now. I am seeing quite a bit of improvements here. And you can also see that these really bright parts and specular areas of the object, they have scaled down as well. So the more of these you do, the less physically accurate your render will be. So it's a bit of a compromise there. But if you do have a good machine and you have, well, you have about eight hours to sleep, depending, I, yeah, just set it on for a few hours, get it rendering. Well, not for a simple little scene like this. This shouldn't take long to render, even at quite a few samples. So there really isn't much commentary I can give you on this. It's literally just me messing around and trying different values for things. Some people look at me, wow, you do everything so fast, and everything's just so nice after you're done. It, it takes a while. It's a lot of trial and error. So here's the difference between direct and limited global illumination. I think definitely I'll go with limited global illumination. Maybe not full global illumination, because that'll take a whole lot longer, but direct just looks too, too bad and not good enough for me. So we'll try 400 samples, and there's a point where sampling after just a few samples, you won't see much difference between the noise. So 200, you see a lot. You're still seeing some difference as the samples go on. But after about 350, maybe to 400, and afterwards, you don't see much difference. There's still quite a bit of noise. So it scales upward. If you want to get better than 400 sampling, then you're probably going to go after 800, 1000 to get more difference and a clearer result. So let's try 600, see how that looks. So this is definitely things to keep in mind, things to play around with, especially if you have some huge render, especially in an animation that's going to take quite a few hours then you're definitely going to want to get the optimal sampling level and everything else. Just so you don't have any noise running around and just especially so you don't over sample things and you just get well, it just stays the same and you can't really get much clearer results after that. So I'll leave it at 600 for now and we'll just play around with some more values check out how it looks, make sure that it's decently, it looks decent, and we're not messing around with these values too much to kill the image. Maybe I'll try clamp direct at 4, and we'll re-render that. Yeah, quite a bit of difference there. Image isn't looking as physically accurate. Of course, I wasn't really going for photorealism, but it doesn't look as good anymore with clamp direct on. But it did kill some of the fireflies and noise, so if you were on a tight time schedule or didn't have a tough machine, then you'd have to, yeah, you'd have to sacrifice some accuracy. So 600 samples with this, it's still looking pretty bad, but we can see the difference between direct and indirect. Actually, if we... So after we added the direct, it hasn't done much at all, except turn down our specular. So I think I'll just go ahead and bring that down to zero. With lower values, you will get less fireflies, but a whole lot less accurate of an image. So I'll leave it down to zero, not put it on at all. And this concludes the fifth part of the tutorial series. Please like, subscribe, comment, stay tuned for the next part of the video, and thank you for watching.